Hi everybody, I am making a video about datajuggler.windcontrols. It's one of my favorite projects and while I'm making some Blazor updates to datatier.net, I thought I would finally getting around to making, um, I'm working on datatier.net so I thought somebody might want to watch me how I work on datatier.net itself because I'm adding some new features. I've already updated the database. I added a couple of fields to the project table and another field to the DTN table table. Say that ten times fast. And so now I'm going to go ahead and just show you. This is the project editor control. I added I, this. Up, I've already added a couple of days ago. This is a a new thing for .NET Core projects. Um, the only difference is I added a well. They they install differently. The .NET Framework pro, uh, templates get installed in Visual Studio, and the .NET Core templates are installed via NuGet through a command line, and it works pretty cool. So, and I added two new features here. The only difference in DataTier.NET though is if you have .NET Core enabled, I don't have to show the little uh, Visual Studio Project Updater control where you include the project files after I if new files are code generated, because in .NET Core everything is automatically code generated. Sorry, I'm talking a lot, but to get into this video, the new features I added here are .NET Core Project and Enable Blazor features, which only becomes visible if you have .NET Core Project selected, because it doesn't make sense. We're not, and then this is a new, this is why I'm making this video, I added this new field called bindings. So there's options, um, I built my first, um, well I built my first Blazor tutorial, I've already built my Blazor website in Blazor, but I built a Blazor checkboxes tutorial and I'll go ahead and show you that. Um, let me open up my preview version of Visual Studio. This is the release candidate, um, the full version of .NET Core comes out next week. So this is just, I'll, I'll, after I built my first project though, I realized some of the stuff I did, um, I had to manually add some callbacks so I could work with the binding of Blazor so I could determine when I needed to save um, objects. So let me, uh, should be open here in just a second. Okay, so this is the Microsoft Blazor tutorial except for I modified it to datatier.net where when I add things, so like if I add add or create video for data juggler dot win dot controls okay see I added a new one and if you edit it it's pretty cool because I can just say uh, inter showing interfaces something like that and the you know it's automatically saving it if I stop the app and close it it'll be there just to show you there's no trickery Involved, but this uses all store procedures. That's everything datatier.net does. So now I created this. Now I haven't. I'm building the video now, but I'm going to speak past tense wise. I'm going to say I've completed it. Notice the little numbers up here automatically update. You know, as I check it and uncheck it, it just shows the completed count. And if I want to delete one, oh, um, here's some of the two new features I'm adding. I'm code generating these things called data watchers. And anyway. So sorry I go on tangents in my video and then here code generate blazer services which is what we're doing. So that's what I'm building. But while I'm building this I thought I would <coughs> excuse me, I thought I would show how <laughs> excuse me, let me go back over to datatier.net. Sorry, I had to get a drink there. I never talk this much. Okay. So I added a couple of features for bindings and what that does is I guess I should have left that project open. So here I'm in my object library class, and I added a a delegate. It's just a, a callback, just where you know a class, and I'll show you where that's defined at. Okay, here's my delegate, and this is just whenever an item changed in my object, I needed to know about it somehow. So what I did was I created this thing called a data watcher, and basically after I load my object, I set this data watcher in each of my classes. I would imagine Entity Framework does something like this. Uh, you know, I don't know how it works under the hood, but that's just my guess. But anyway, so what this data watcher does is, I'll show you in the properties here, if 
the value of is done is set. If the new value doesn't match the current value, then we know it's changed. So if it has a callback and there's changes, we call the delegate. And all that does, I go over here to my class called a data watcher, which is the to do data watcher right here. And this is something else I was going to code generate. It's not that hard to, to build one. It took me all of a couple of minutes, but I thought it would be something I could code generate pretty easily. So basically, if an item changed, I cast the item as a to do object, which is just an object in a table in the database. And if the to do object, if the cast was successful, then I perform the save. And that calls the to do service. And I'll just show you one of these. This is the other thing I was going to code generate because it. I mean, it's using, here's the new changes too for the data gateway. I realize this is a data juggler.win controls video, but I uh, only have so much time, so it's showing both all my controls in one. But here's the way you get gateway, and this is a system environment variable. I just created a class to hold the name, so I didn't have to hard code it everywhere. And here, perform the save. So that's how I save items. And so that's all I'm going to show for this, but that's why I, what I was doing over here in Blazor, everybody may not want their classes to have this option. So I, I created two properties, one at the project level that says allow, go back over to this project, allow, um, enable, I mean, uh, binding has its enumeration. And that's one of the things I wanted to show in this video. So sorry, the first 10 minutes of this video is just me talking about we're getting to hear what we're doing though. So let me go into the init method. And in the init method, here's the binding control. I'm loading the items. Let me go to that enumerations. All you have to do is create an enumeration. Now, I'm not a fan of enumerations with underscores, except for when I'm using it with this control. So uh, go back to where I was in the project editor. So here I'm just loading, you can pass in an enumeration name and the, this control right here, which is just a, it's called a label. Go back to the project editor. Sorry, let me close everything. I got too many things open, I get confused. Okay, sorry, let me get the project editor back open. But anyway, that's what I was trying to show you, the enumeration. Here's the project editor. So this is called a label combo box control because as you can guess, it contains a label and a combo box or I think the actual name is a drop down list. But so basically, and it's got some properties for like uh, all the properties of the label are customizable going down to the color, to the font and the set the label text as well as the label width if you want to change the size. And then I showed you how to load the items with the, it loads an enumeration now I'm going to show you, oh, by the way, you install this, as I showed on the beginning, is to install it as just manage NuGet packages for solution. Sorry, I kind of jump around a lot, I'm sure. I'm the worst video presenter. This is an on-the-fly video. And I'm not going to update that right this second, but here's datajuggler.win control. So it's just install. If, you, if you're a command line person, it's install package datajuggler.win.controls. But if not, you can just use... Uh, the uh, manage NuGet packages, you know, like that, like I do. And here I'm going to show you how to, I'm adding the interfaces. This is where I decided to make the video. So sorry, the first 12 minutes of me making this video is set up to get to here. But data juggler dot, okay, I've already added it. Sorry. No, I didn't. I saw that was the data to your client. Data juggler dot win dot controls and data juggler win.controls.interfaces. Now the interfaces part is just one method. It's I selected index listener. Now you notice it's got an underline. That means we don't have that implemented. So all I have to do is come over here and say, oh, quick actions and refactorings, implement interface. So now we're going to go down and somewhere. Now this is where you'll see I'm a regionaholic. So I have to search for where it just put that. Selected index listener. Let's see. Okay, here. This is where it put it. So this is one of my controls called regionizer format selection. And it took that. That's how I put everything in alphabetical order like I do. So if you ever want to use regionizer, it's on GitHub. GitHub datajuggler.com slash regionizer. 
This is the open source Amazon.com equivalent, even though I hate them. Okay, so here, this is the interface for on selected index changed. Now, here, what I want to do is just say if has selected project. Now, notice my auto commenting is turned on, so all I do here is hit Control Shift and it types that, it completes that auto commenting. And if you want to learn how to do that, let me know in the comments and it's been on my to-do list to make a new video for regular expressions. That's how it uses the auto comment dictionary for that. All right, so now, selected project dot binding callback option equals, and this is gonna be binding callback option enum, Selected index. Okay. All right. So I believe that's going to be correct. I have to I have to look at the options to make sure that is not a sorted combo box because that could mess that up. I might have to parse that manually. But let's just see what that um, numbers look like. Let me go look at my enumeration again. That'll probably help me there. No binding. Okay. Allow binding one. Okay, create binding is two. So that is probably going to be, let me make sure sorted is false. Okay, turn sorted to false. Because we want it to be in exact order. Alright, so now we're going to run it. I just want to see, oh, and there's one more thing I need to do. And then, sorry, back to the project editor control. And method is display selected project. And this is going to be int. We'll just call it binding index. And here we'll say binding index equals binding callback option control dot find item index by value. And that is going to be, ah, uh, we don't want by value. All right, we do want value. And we'll just say binding callback option control dot text, combo box text. Okay, that should set our index. And then here we're just going to set, wait, no, 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 binding index. We're going to have to actually customize this. All right, we'll just do a find binding index is what we'll write a quick method and we'll call this selected project dot binding callback option and you'll notice that method doesn't exist so I come over here to regionizer add method it's going to have an integer return type hit my name hit add method all right and now I want that to return negative one instead of zero and my parameter is going to be uh, int binding option callback callback let's go back to that one second There we go. Okay. And now we're just going to do a quick little switch statement. Binding. Again, that's an auto comment right there. I didn't have to type that comment. Case zero or case. Option one. We'll make this. This is a, that's what we're supposed to do. Binding callback. Okay. We'll just make that option. All right. Okay. And I'm going to update my region here. Ah, I took off on that. Okay. 
now case no binding or not binding um, we're going to make this return type the same thing binding index equals binding callback no this is an index i'm sorry that's what we're looking for okay now binding We will just say index equals allow binding is going to be the second item. So we want that to be one. Set the return value. Okay, and now we can copy and set these over to. That's an it, sorry. Okay. And then we'll do two more of these. And this is going to be no binding. And we're going to do these both with both because the, we'll do it. Oh, this is, uh, never mind. All right. Allow binding. And create binding. And the create binding means it's going to automatically add the binding to each table. And we'll make that index equals two. And that is zero and two. All right, so that is our index. All right, so now we're going to display this dot binding callback option control dot selected index equals binding index. Right? And now in our selected index chain, I think we already did that, right? Let me see. Yes. Okay. Oop. All right. Now I think we got it. We're going to run this and see. So you get into watch. See how long, how bad of a video it just made. 18 minutes. And of course, it doesn't work. working on datatier.net itself. That's kind of a geeky thing. I actually worked on it in a copy in a directory. Okay, so this is what this looks like. Now that I see, I kind of want to push that down a little bit. Now, if I select .NET Core Project, this little checkbox here shows up. So that part's working. The bindings option is set to no bindings. We're going to try to set it to allow bindings. And that means you have to go to a table and turn it on. And we're just going to go to save and see what happens. Oh, this is not a .NET Core project. Sorry, .datatier.net itself is not. So now we'll just hit. Uh, now notice there's no changes. It didn't pick up this. Because if it did, OK, let's just go to allow binding next. No, nope, it's not picking up. I'll have to figure that to look at my little uh, and, oh, I know what we didn't do. I'll tell you why that didn't work. Sorry, there's one last thing you did. So I'm probably going to go through this 20-minute video and narrow it down to two minutes of the interesting stuff for this video. Here's the init method. Go to implementation. This dot binding callback option control dot selected index listener equals this. And this is how you tell the control that I want to subscribe to events. So set up the listener. Okay, now, so that's why that, that selected index event was not getting called there, but now you will see it get called. So it's kind of good that that happened. You got to force me to show how to do that. So we're gonna open this up again. Okay, and now it's set to no binding. We're gonna change that to allow binding. Okay, and now, Okay, I know what I didn't do. I need to, in that event, I need to add a call to UI enable. So let's go back to the project editor. 
go to the selected index changed event it worked but I don't have a call here to this method called UI enable and this is another auto comment I just hit control shift there and it fills that in and now we're going to hit save on this and if I do it this time the save button should become enabled the exact second that I uh, change the uh, let me open this project up edit project so as soon as I change this to allow binding the save button is now enabled so we're going to hit save and now I'm going to close the program just to make sure I want to run it again and just see if that, that part's working so oops edit project allow binding okay all right so we did it so that's what I wanted to show sorry that took 20 minutes for me to show but that's how uh, I think this little label combo box control is pretty neat and that's how I work on datatier.net now what I do here I'll just go ahead and hit next and hit done uh, I have a directory called staging I don't build on the actual datatier.net because if I do I've messed up datatier.net and the solution to fix it was datatier.net sometimes so I had to um, I, I create another directory called staging and I just copy the data library work on it and put it back when I'm done so that way anyway so sorry this was a 20 minute video but that's how I use interfaces with data juggler .win controls and the label combo box control so now I'm debating whether I should show this video or not it was not one of my best but I think all this stuff works pretty neat so you might want to know about it all right thanks bye